When we return, 2012 NBA champion Steven Jackson is here. We've got questions for Jax. It's going to be good. We are back. 2003 champion. I'm fired. Steven Jackson in studio today. Co-host of the All the Smoke podcast, of course, with Matt Barnes, a ginormous podcast, to say the very least. Oh, my goodness, buddy. I know you love mornings. Um, so do we, <laughs> as you can tell. Okay, I know we're going to get to the, the draft lottery last night because it was a big moment, but I know there was a lot made we're of... because we're Spurs, well, you are now, because you mended. Fe- I mean, you're good. Yeah, we're good. Right? Now. Well, we're how good. did that? How did that all happen with well, us? Well, not, we're good. well, nothing. Actually, we haven't had any conversations. It's just, you know, <laughs> times pass, things happen. You know, I, I forgive them. They did give me an opportunity to win the championship. Yeah. But you know, I had to let them know what they did. You know what I mean? A lot of people <laughs> didn't understand how my my career ended with San Antonio. Right. So I had to tell those stories. Let me ask you this though. Um, in the same in the interview you did with Dejounte Murray, you did reference uh, women in San Antonio being meh. You want to yeah. talk about that with me? Yeah, uh, <laughs> I, I live there, and you know, <laughs> one thing about me, I, about I like me. my women a fry away from being fat, <laughs> right? God. I do. I like my women with some meat on it, right? So <laughs> in San Antonio, it was just perfect for me. You know, the, the, all the women that like to eat, you know, it's one of the leading uh, cities in obesity in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it's just the truth. It's just the truth. But, uh, you know, it, it, it worked for me because I'm from Texas, so I was used to it. I know. We could, we're allowed to say it, guys, not y'all. We would not be fighting <laughs> over like the same women's <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. We would not be arguing over that. I'm a country boy. I'm a country boy. Uh, but obviously, we know all the expectations. <laughs> with Victor going number one, most likely going to the Spurs. Mm-hmm. What can he expect, you know, playing in that system, that city for Pop, everything that comes with it? I think the biggest thing for him that he's going to be in a system where everything is professional. It's a championship organization they used to win in. They do everything by the book. Um, they're going to have everything he needs for him to be successful and be the best player he needs to be. I think it's the best situation for any young kid coming into the NBA is going to that family oriented, family oriented San Antonio Spurs organization where you're going to get the best out of everything there. Look, I'm gonna I'm gonna pivot a little bit. We don't talk about the Spurs all day. Uh, John Morant, <laughs> yes. this is something you've been outspoken about, and mm-hmm. I know people say a lot of times, "Yo, vets in the locker room, it would help," and stuff isn't happening in the locker room. But hmm. if you were his vet, if you, like, what would your advice be to him in this situation? You've had your own situation. You mm-hmm. spoke about as well. Like, what's going on? Like, what do you tell somebody like going through this? Well, you know, at the same time, you can have vets, but you have to want to do right for you by yourself first, right? So when I made mistakes, you know, I did have vets to tell me, like, okay, look, one more, one more incident and it's over. Guys like Reggie Miller, guys like Steve Smith. So I was able to make some drastic changes in my life to be where I'm at today hmm. because I cared about the people around me. I didn't want to be selfish and do, uh, make decisions that I hurt people that I take care of. You know, I care about people around me, so I wanted to be... Um, continue to be the protector and provider that I was raised to be. So he has to make that decision on and, and, and sit down and look in the mirror like, okay, I'm being selfish to do these things the second time. It, it, it doesn't show maturity at all to do something so stupid again where, you know, and then it's self-inflicted. It's, it's not nothing that somebody's doing or, 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 or baiting him in to do it. He's doing it on his own. So I think it's nothing that a veteran or anything can do at this, at this point. He has to look in the mirror and understand what, what's at jeopardy. And he has to make these decisions. His dad can't tell him anything. His mom can't tell him anything. This is huh. all on him. The second time, I think the, everything that's happening, the blame, the trouble he's going to get in suspension, all that needs to sit in his lap. And he needs to deal with this time to understand what's at stake. Because last time, the little slap on the hand, the fake uh, meetings he had with people, none of that, I knew none of that worked. <laughs> because they tried to make me meet with people. You know what I'm saying? When we got in the brawl. Yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. That, that, didn't, that didn't do any justice for me. So... He has, to, he, has to, he has to own up to this and, 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 and sit down and look in the mirror and understand that, okay, I made this mistake. Now I have to deal with it. Whether it's suspension, whether it's missing it all year, he got to deal with it. Nobody can help him this time. Wait, what do you think the league should do suspension-wise? How much? Well, I'm not, I'm, I've been a guy who lost $3 million for one punch. Yep. So I, I'm not, I really don't want to get, get, get into that side. It's a hell of a punch. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 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 like, you know what I'm saying? But I, I, I was helping somebody. I was actually helping the teammate, too. You know what I'm saying? I was actually helping my teammate. Y'all were going Team 12 player. on 18,000. Yeah. Yeah. You had to. You're outnumbered. <laughs> but the suspension, whatever it is, uh, Michelle, whatever it is, I just think that um, it needs to be 
something that is going to make him realize what he has at stake because yeah. eight games didn't do it. Mm -mm. You know, talking to people didn't do it. It has to be a mm -hmm. point where, because for me, when I got suspended 30 games and the game was taken away from me, I really had to sit down and like, Right. Damn. And that's what that's what really hurts. Money, the friends, all that. Take the game away from him and see what happens. Yeah, I, honestly, it's, it's sad to me that this kid has it all, right? He's got $230 million guaranteed. He's so talented. He's one of the most successful, <laughs> fun-to-watch players in the league. And there's a small window for you to maximize that and to see him do it the first time and now do the same thing again. Like you said, it was self-inflicted. It's not like TMZ got him, right? right. So this yeah. is just, this is immature. It's ignorant. It shows his apology. It really didn't mean much because he just went, he's, he surrounds himself with horrible people. And I hope he gets better. And I hope, because, I mean, he's he's great for the league, right? Mm -hmm. He is right. so talented. He is fun to watch. But, man, you, you can't, you're a role model. So many yeah. kids are watching. You can't put this message out there, right? I now. have a nephew, bro. Yeah. I don't mean to cut y'all, but I have a nephew. So my, my brother passed at the end of last year, my little brother. And he's a big John Moret fan, right? He wears his hair like him, hmm. dresses like him, everything. I reached out to Ja and told him my brother, my little my nephew, really wants to meet you. My, he's going through a tough time, just lost his dad. And he reached out. So he's a good kid. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so he's a good kid. I just think that a lot of times when kids from our area fall into money, we turn, we want to be gangster. We think that money makes us gangster. And that's totally the opposite. You know, I, I, I come from it and I made it a point for me to try to get away from it because I know how hard it was being in that life. And a lot of times when you see kids do that, they're trying to be something they're not because the guys that really carried guns growing up, they try, they, they, they were try, trying to get out that life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So for him to do that, it shows that he's, he's, he, he's influenced by the wrong type of people, by the wrong type of music, and he should be the one influencing others instead of being influenced by nonsense. Yeah. No, I mean, y'all said it all. I definitely agree. Uh, I think everything with a pro athlete in the position you're in, it's just the accountability and, and the direction that you want to go. And with Ja, I think, you know, one thing that's occurring is he's going from being, you know, the young, cute puppy kid that everybody <laughs> loved to, you know, now being a man and, you know, comprehending that he has to take over the organization and franchise and the whole league mm -hmm. to really set the tone and, and slow everything down and be like, yo, this is how we're going to do things now. When he says a quote, Everybody says it. When he does a dance, everybody does it. Mm -hmm. So I think he has to be cognizant of that at all times and be like, yo, I just got to at least do all my dumb stuff inside the crib with no phones. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right. And, and make yeah. and elevate to a businessman and, 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 and an icon like he really is. The first time this happened, there was a lot more favor for him around the league. A lot of guys were saying, hey, I get it. I, you know, <laughs> this and that. This time, form. it's a lot more, a lot more of like, hey, mm -hmm. fool me once. Right. You know what I mean? But I'm talking to players around the league like, yo, he's... You said it earlier, he's a provider, he has too much responsibility. He has Nike, he has the NBA, he has, yeah. his power, he has mm. all these situations that are built on him, including his family and all that stuff. Now everybody's like, all right, dog, like, what, what are we doing now? Mm -hmm. And he's gonna, have to, he's gonna have to live with that, like you said. And if they take away the game from him, they take away all that, he's gonna have to look with, within. And I think, you know, we might finally be at that point, hopefully. Yeah, and uh, just to change pace, obviously, uh... I got a question for you. If you're mm -hmm. James Harden, where would you be hooping at next year? <laughs> oh, what stay, a sidestep there. You stay in Phillies, stop by the Lilas, or would you go down <laughs> to, <laughs> to Texas <laughs> where, <laughs> where they're a little bit thicker, like you said? But they, you know, one thing, one thing about Houston, they love James in Houston. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They love him in Houston. The don't, but but if you're him, don't you go and just retire there in yeah, four or five years? Why would you go to this? and? Because it ain't the same. But you ain't winning. <laughs> you're not, you're not yeah. winning there. Triple, double, yeah. leave. After yeah. party, like the streets is waiting for it. Wow. He has a restaurant there, restaurant 13. I think for him, man, it depends on what he wants out the end of the rest of his career. Does he want to run his numbers up yeah. and have a good time and, 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 and build his legacy in Houston? Does he want to stay in Philly and with, with, with his uh, guys, um, Dan Phoney? And uh, if, 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 if he comes wow. and Daryl Morey and lose for the rest of his career, because that's what's gonna happen. Dan Tony ain't won nothing. I don't know why they think about bringing him in and bringing them back together. What have they won together? <gasps> nothing. I don't know. I don't know why they even think bringing that up. Dan Tony's the only guy that keep getting jobs that ain't won nothing. I don't. I just it hurts me to death, bro. But if he stay in Philly, it, it's gonna really depend on what coach. Mm. It's gonna really depend on what coach. Um, you know, they, they blamed everything on Doc, and Doc does have a bad track record of being a 3-1. I can't go against that, but if I was James, I would find a situation where I can be me, but also win. And yeah. I, I think that's definitely not in Houston. It might be in Philly. Who knows where it is, but um, <laughs> not, not Houston. No. Nah, he, not he's yet. not gonna win Yeah, just retire there. Yeah. That's, that's it. Well, if you wanna chill, it's cool. Yeah, go yeah, to Houston. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about you a little bit. The sure. show with Matt Bourne, All the Smoke, one of the <laughs> biggest podcasts in the world, the big Thanks. shows. 
Uh, at what point did you two come together and say, hey, let's do this? And when did you know that was the move for you? Uh, I think it was just a timing thing. I was doing Fox and ESPN at the time, and Matt was as well. <laughs> and um, a lot of the shows, you know, we were doing good and bringing a lot of attention to a lot of the shows. We was like, man, we need to do our own show. And um, we were just sitting and smoking one day, and um, we were talking about the show. And <laughs> his, his, sister say, his sister said, y'all need to come up with a show, like, all, name it All the Smoke. She came up with it. Uh, Matt had a great relationship with Ellen Reckerton. She's one of the creators of Red Table Talk. Mm -hmm. um, she brought us to Showtime with Brian Daly. We pitched the idea. Two weeks later, well, maybe a month later, we're doing a photo shoot for the show. And, you know, I, I just really, it's really to all our fans, man. I think for me and Matt, people love us because we wear our emotions on our sleeve. Everything we go through in life, we talk about it, we don't hide about it. And a lot of people that come on our show, um, they feel like they can do the same thing, say things they've been wanting to say and get stuff off their chest. So the reason for our success has been for the, our support from our fans, but a lot of our guests that come on and, and tell good stories and you know give, give us a lot of stuff that nobody knew about them. So it's been a blessing from Showtime, and uh, but shouts out to Matt for uh, bringing this together. Yeah, pull up, Matt. I know it's early. Yeah. yeah. Pull up, man. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, he, he the boss, man. He, he do, hey, I, I don't mind getting up, because he going to do all the hard stuff. He going to do all the meetings. He going to make sure the money, right, the contracts, That's right? Smart. So, yeah, 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 I like that. I do the dirty work. Yeah. There you go. I went on your show. I had a great time. We had a great time. We had a great time. Had a great time. <laughs> Might still be hot. Uh, <laughs> and you gave us the best. Kobe story oh, we've had on our show. The crazy. best Kobe story. That was crazy. That was all facts, too. I was not gassing that. But I hope besides so. me, who were you most looking forward besides to chopping up me. on your show? Because you've had some crazy list of guests. My my, my favorite guests, um, well, I have two. Will Smith and Jim Gray. Mm. Uh, Jim Gray has been like a mentor of mine for the last wow. five, six years. Wow. Uh, he talked about me in his book. Um, and he's somebody who I talk to a lot. Even with the boxing space now, um, I'm learning a lot from him. But Jim Gray has some of the best stories. He's been around so long. Uh, yeah. Muhammad Ali's first and last interview. Um, he got a lot of great stories of sports, man. And, uh, but uh, Will Smith's uh, first interview mm. was right after the Chris Rock. Oh, dear. Mm. Yeah. And, um, and also, it was uh, when he just dropped the Emancipation movie. It was an uh, excellent movie. Antoine Fuqua, it was a great movie. And um, just being able to talk to him. And uh, him announced, he announced on the show that he's producing my documentary with Westbrook. Oh, um, wow. Yeah, so that interview was just great to be able to meet him and to pick his brain. Jax, this has been a pleasure and an honor. <laughs> All the smoke. I don't even know. I don't need to promote it. It's one of the biggest podcasts out there. It's been great to see you. Great I know to you're see busy. You. It's been you're a off. while. It's been a while. It's been um, a while. We're gonna come back and wrap things up really, really, really quickly. Run it we're gonna back the chance. Run it up. give up. Yeah, I'm not Run it up. Run it back. Run it up. Run it back, yeah, yeah. Run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back, run it up, run it back.